Here. Here. Ogleski. Here. Herman. Here. Kaufman. Here. Miller. Rule. Here. Schusler. Here. Muller. Here. Ray, you want to introduce our new. Yes, thank you, Terry. Member. Um, we have a new leadership Oshkosh adjunct board member. Uh, David Shattuck is an uh, employee with Oshkosh Corp, correct? Oshkosh Defense, yep. Oshkosh Defense. Um, so he will be joining us from now until next May as part of the leadership Oshkosh program. So I don't know if you want to give a little background of yourself briefly and just let the board know about yourself. Yeah, so like I said, my name is Dave Shattuck. I've been with <coughs> Oshkosh Defense for about nine and a half years now. Um, I spent a two-year stint up at Pierce as a plant manager of their 41 facility right off the highway that a lot of you guys see driving by. Um, recently came back with uh, JLTV coming back. I'm um, excited to be here and, and be on the board, so look forward to it. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, first is approval of the August 14th minutes. Any additions, corrections? A motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Now the approval of the September 11th meeting minutes. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, if there's any citizen statements now that do not <coughs> pertain to what we have on the agenda, <coughs> now is your time to talk. <clears throat> okay, see none, we'll get into new business. Consider request to prohibit fishing along the Fox River Riverwalk, Deldwin section west of Oregon Street. Ray will take over because he's got a correction because he was wrong. <laughs> um, the, um, on the agenda, it should say west and east of Oregon Street, so... Um, when we looked at the map, we, we uh, interpreted it as being only west of Oregon Street. But So I want the public as well as the board and, and audience to know that it's the section which has been completed directly east of Oregon Street. And then it'll be section, um, as shown on the, the screen, going west of Oregon Street along the old uh, Geldwin site, essentially going up to the existing pedestrian bridge, which goes over the, uh, the island area of the Boatworks property. Um, the... Development group for uh, Morgan Partners, um, which will be developing that section of the Geld One property, has brought this request forward to the city to consider um, um, prohibiting fishing along that section of the Riverwalk. Um, you can take a look at the various sections of the Riverwalk, and if you look at the city center hotel area, it states fishing prohibited. If you recall back when we developed that section of the Riverwalk, um, we did prohibit fishing there based on the um, uses as far as um, more of a business district um, instead of residential. Um, so that's the, the current section that we prohibit fishing on. Um, so this would be a potential second area of the river walk where um, fishing would not be prohibited. And um, what we would need to do is uh, make a recommendation to the city council to have that inserted into the city ordinance. Um, Peter Lang is here from the uh, Morgan Partners, as well as Darlene Brand from our planning division. Darlene works closely with the um, developers of the, the Riverwalk sections. Um, so a map has been included, and we can try to answer any questions you might have. Yes, Bill. Uh, Ray, going east of Oregon, uh, it looks like it doesn't go all the way to what, what is it, the dockside? There's going to be a gap there then where people can fish? No, right now, um, where it stops, um, we do not have an access agreement, whether um, acquired property or an easement to go behind Dockside or Sweetwater Marine at this point. Um, so what it will be doing is coming up, uh, um, I think there's a, a storm sewer easement that comes up along the old granary building. So the river walk will actually bring you back up towards the old granary, back down towards Main Street on the sidewalk um, until a future time when we're able to um, work with the developer, not the developers, the property owner of Dockside as well as Sweetwater to look at options to stay along the river. Well, my question is, from Oregon going east, it doesn't go all the way to Dockside, right? And that, is that where the river walk ends right there? Correct, it stops okay. right, right. right now right. it stops at Dockside, right. yes. Right. That's it. 
So I just have a question. Uh, so the reason for wanting no fishing is because it's going to be a business district? Is that the reason? <laughs> No, at this point, and, and maybe Peter can um, come up with and address this as well. Right now, I don't believe there's a firm development plan, so there may potentially be residential and or business or a combination, but I'm going to let Peter address that question if he could. At, yeah, go ahead. Thank you guys for having me and considering this. Um, representative from the Morgan District, as Ray said. So as of right now, we're still working through our development prospects. Um, we have a good idea of what we're gonna do and there will be some residential. Uh, at the time that the easement came forward with a request from the city for us to provide the easement through the property, uh, we expressed at that time that we would like this restriction in place in order to preserve development efforts. Um, the property to the west of Oregon Street is still private property for which we've granted public access through the private property. Uh, we don't know what mix of commercial or residential will be through that development yet. And so in order to retain as much development prospect as possible, we want to retain that. Um, certainly if there's a private pier for condos, people would be able to access it. The private residences would be able to access off private piers that are placed. But at this point in time, until we know what our development plan is, we'd, we'd like this restriction in place. And I've been fairly consistent in saying that throughout the easement granting process. So I'm just, just my only question or concern is if the, if depending on how it's developed and if we're not consistent, do you know what I mean? Like um, if, if we're ruling out fishing in front of certain business, business districts, but then not others, that's just, I'm, I so don't understand. Perhaps that. from a different context, the only other section of Riverwalk that was donated from private entities is the areas where fishing is prohibited. So we are again, a private enterprise donating land or access for the public and this would be one of the requests of our donation which at the time we donated it was not part of the easement because that would have been per permanent uh, if a condo owner group or a future owner or whoever was part of that wanted to rescind this ordinance it certainly would be possible at that point in time okay and that's my understanding okay thanks I just I'm not I wasn't clear on yep. thanks Peter this was part of your uh Plan all the time. I mean, with the easement and everything, it was kind of a given that this would be a no fishing area. That was our understanding. Yes, and and, um, and it, that you would be able to build docks there. We do have the right to build docks currently, private docks. One of the reasons we had to maintain the riparian right is so that we could have access to put in private docks. If we were to have fully given the property, we couldn't put private docks into that section and the per docks DNR are right. And okay through the DNR and everything, right? We have a certain legislative <clears throat> permitted amount, which I think is 34. In our last <laughs> conversation with the DNR, they thought we could have multiples of that two to four. I don't think we'd get 120 docks in. No, but, I don't think there is public access obviously to the west of us at the fishing pier uh, east of us along the park and north of us across the river at the publicly owned property so and it it, it is um, certainly something as we go through development that could change at this point until we know exactly what our development is we'd, we'd like to have the ability to have the restriction in place yeah I just wanted to make sure as long as uh, when you were giving this land to the city, it was kind of your understanding that... Uh, that was my understanding at that point in time, that it, it would need to be addressed through this process of an ordinance, and if we put it in the easement, it would be it would have been more difficult to rescind at a later date. Right, okay. And I'd have to have the city speak to that. Right. Anybody else? Buddy. Not even Miller. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, <clears throat> personally, I think it's probably all right for the simple fact we're not really taking anything away from anybody. It never has been open to the public or anything else. I do, I was a little troubled that the city gave Pete, or the, these people, Pete and the rest of them, kind of the idea that this would, 
be that way if they gave it it's something that they gave to the city it was their property to give to the city for the walk which was very good so I personally you know we we have docks on on the end fishing docks and everything else we do have fishing on the other side we have fishing on the end uh, every place that I can think of that was public is fishing so we're really not taking anything away from anybody because it never was open to the public for before. So I think I can uh, support it myself. Just uh, one last thing because I know you like it, how much I talk and everything. Peter, thank you for, to you and your investment group for donating the land. We really appreciate it, so thank you. else is there anybody who wants to make a motion that we put this in I'll make a motion oh, go ahead I would okay. make a motion to move forward I'll second that you got a roll call Aaron? Davis yes Aaron yes Kovaleski yes Herman aye Kaufman yes Schusler yes Wooler yes motion passes I don't get to vote I didn't get to vote. Nine, motion passes. Nine no, no. no, you did. You didn't let him vote. <laughs> I realize he isn't here now, but you didn't let him vote this He's time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Miller. How would you like to vote? I'll vote aye, and you look very handsome today. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> More that campaigning going on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, they all do you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Next month I'll get things right. <laughs> Next on the agenda, accept parkland dedication for development on property located at Jackson Street Corridor on City's North Side, Crystal <coughs> Square Subdivision. Thanks, Terry. Um, this is an item coming forward with a um, current <coughs> development that is being worked through our planning and planning department. Um, I want to start out by bringing this map to your attention that's up on the screen. Um, if you recall in our comprehensive outdoor recreation plan, we do look at areas of the city that are not currently served by um, neighborhood or community parks. This map um, is in our 2011 plan. I don't expect that it'll change much in our current documents, seeing how we haven't really acquired much property um, since 2011. Um, but this area that we are looking at is just about where the cursor is. Here's a little wetlands area that's shown on our map. Um, this is the dead end, I think it's Western Avenue that comes through. So you can see that it's pretty much, it's almost in the bullseye of the area we identified as in need of a, a neighborhood park when development takes place. So the, the actual parkland is right about in this area. And based on the um, development that's being proposed, here's an, um, showing the the lots and again here is here's the wetland area that I was showing you and here's the proposed parkland um, it's approximately 3.2 acres and that um, number comes from the um, the city code which is required of developers to either dedicate parkland or to pay a fee in lieu of dedication uh, because this is obviously right in that area that we need some future neighborhood parks our recommendation is to take the parkland instead of the fees. Um, so that's our recommendation. Uh, the Plan Commission did discuss this at a recent um, Plan Commission meeting. They are supporting the, um, the final plat as well as the parkland dedication, but obviously that is uh, the Park Board's purview and we would pass that recommendation on to the Common <coughs> Council. Ray, you said it was 2.2 acres? 3.2? 3.2? Yes. Okay, what would that compare to to our current park? Is there a current park that we have that's like 3.2 acres? Oh, Bill, why do you ask? Um, yeah, like 44th. Peck Miller, yep, is 44th a, parallel. 44th. Probably close to about four acres, roughly. Um, West Haven is bigger than that. Um, 44th parallel would be a good comp or a good comparison. All right. 
Anyone else? This is going way too easy. <laughs> My only comment is I like the idea of uh, taking the land and not telling them that, you know, they owe some money or something. I think we should take the land and not take the money because um, they ain't making any more of that anymore. So. I had one question as far as with the easement. Looks like there's a sewer easement going through it. Looks like they're going to be possibly uh, releasing some of it. Yeah, there's one old easement that's shown on there, Todd, and uh, engineering is going to be working with the developer to release that easement. So it would still be something that could build something in the future? That's correct. Yes, it would have less restrictions for us on <coughs> potential building as well. Yes. Ray, and I always hate asking questions like this, but where are we at below the state average for a percentage of parks? I, I know that number's been thrown around a lot lately. Just ballpark. I'm not, I'm not looking for a specific, but... There's a, a national park and recreation standard um, that per, thou, or per thousand people, you should have about eight acres of parkland. And I believe the city's currently at about 5.3, um, is what I recall offhand. Um, those are some old standards that have been used a long time. And since uh, the last number of years, and when we actually did our 2011 comp plan, um, we're looking more at what's called level of service. It's more of what are your citizens requesting, and um, is it more parkland? Is it more bike trails? Is it um, athletic facilities. So it's more of taking the public input side of things as we go through this process versus a standard saying these are the amount of acres that we suggest you have. Uh, but to give you a, a reference, that's roughly what the national standard was and, and continues to be. Okay. I, I agree with Terry. I think we should take the land and not the money. Okay. Is there a motion to accept? Second. Davis? Aye. Durth? Aye. Bogoleski? Aye. Herman? Aye. Hoffman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rule? Aye. Schusler? Aye. Wohler? Aye. Did I forget anyone? No. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't forget anybody before, I was just giving you our time. Nobody important there. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> okay. Review comprehensive outdoor rec plan. Yes, um, in your packet or via email, you should have received the results of our um, survey, the community survey that we um, provided. And uh, the majority of this um, we promoted um, however we could through the various social media, um, via email blasts, um, user groups, neighborhood associations. Um, I know that in our different divisions between the Senior Center, Golf Course, and um, other areas, we're providing it to their uh, clients as well. <laughs> so what I wanted to do was just take you through that and let the public know some of the results as we go through. Um, I've had a chance to just highlight a couple of things that I'll bring up as we're going through, and, and if the board um, recognized anything, um, I'd like to encourage some, some dialogue here. What we'll do then is um, we'll... Rettler has this information. They're also digesting it and anal analyzing it. Uh, but if there's anything particular that the board would like to have incorporated into this section of the corp, um, that's something we'd like to work on tonight. So I'm going to walk through some of the slides fairly quickly here. Um, the first question, do you ride, reside in the city of Oshkosh? Um, we had 641 responses for this survey. When we did it back in 2011, we had just over 800. Um, so I was hoping to beat that 800 level, but uh, we were just... Um, under just over 600 some <laughs> so gives you an idea we had um, over 80 percent of the respondents were 84 um, percent were residents of the city of Oshkosh uh, and then as far as an age um, <clears throat> nearly half of the people fell in the 31 the 45 year old age group and then in the age group 46 to 60 and 61 to 75, um, about 25% each. Um, do you have children under age 18? Um, as you can see, just, uh, just over 42% said yes that they had children under age 18. Next question asks um, how many if you did. 
Um, so you can see the majority that did have kids over age 18, they have two children, so just under 20%. Um, helps us with obviously some of the demographics when we're starting to look at these results. Um, as far as re obtaining information about the, the parks and facilities, the two largest, social media, word of mouth. Um, I don't think that's any big surprise, social media being what it is. And um, I think Ann, uh, through our department, has been doing a very good job in um, <laughs> developing some different marketing strategies using social media. So about 71% of the people uh, receive their information that way. How often you use park facilities? Um, almost 50% use them weekly, 11% um, daily. Most visited parks, I don't think there's many surprises here. Um, 80, almost 84% Menominee Park, South Park 58%, uh, Rainbow Red Arrow. And then as far as other parks, um, there was an opportunity for people to provide in information uh, Thirty-eight percent said other, and in that other, Lakeshore Golf Course um, were, was about the same average as about Red Red Arrow and Rainbow. So about eighteen percent that responded said uh, Lakeshore Golf Course. <clears throat> Satisfaction with the condition of the parks. Um, this is one that that I really looked at um, and compared to the um, survey that we did in back in two thousand eleven. Just to give you an idea, back in 2011, we had, um, as far as very satisfied during these surveys, said 27% of the respondents were very satisfied. You can say right now we're up to about 38%. And back in 2011, 50% were somewhat satisfied. So between those two, back in 2011, we had about a 77% satisfaction rate. So when you take a look at this survey, um, I think um, that takes us up to about 88% at this point. So I, I really contribute that to a lot of the work that our staff has been doing. Um, a little more attention to detail, I hope, saying that the people are a little more satisfied even in the last five years, um, going back to 2011. So that one for me was um, a nice jump to see for our department. Athletic fields. Ray, um, can, I, yes. can I interrupt you quick? So can, can, you, can you back up a little bit? So do we do we ask second and third level questions where where it goes, you know, don't visit <clears throat> conditions unacceptable? Do we find out what specifically they're talking about as far as why they don't or what doesn't? Right. Yes. right. So we'll we, get into some of that as far as okay. what needs to be improved. Okay. And Thanks. some of those maintenance issues. Correct. Athletic fields. Uh, do you feel there's enough athletic fields for the youth? You can see that uh, 52 um, percent percent said yes. About 20 percent no, and about 27% um, unknown at this point, or not known. Um, not, not really much different here for the number of athletic fields for adults. And then we asked about, please rank the following uh, facilities according to priority of what is important for long range planning. Um, I'll say that there's a couple <coughs> items here that surprise me in that, I think horseshoe pits really um, in some areas really showed up high basketball courts football fields pickleball I think we've been hearing that for the last three plus years that pickleball is really something we need to start focusing on um, so I think as we start looking forward some of this information again soccer fields tennis courts volleyball courts um, and take a look at the percentage of people that are saying that that's a little more important to them um, Riverwalk developments seem to have gone down a little bit, but it also, in some other questions, you'll see that it, um, it is up there. We've got off-leash dog parks. So some information there that's um, fairly interesting to take a look at. Question I noticed as far as the percentage, if you look at the percentage <coughs> compared to the bars, I don't know if they match up correctly. If you look at like uh, <coughs> pickleball courts, you look at those, it looks like it's quite high, but if you look at the percentage down below, at 21%. Cuz if you look at high and that would be the low 78% be <sighs> reading it wrong cuz high lower than total. Stacey, are you seeing it? You're the I survey expert. Saying, I 
this is all done by Survey Monkey is the one who did the survey, and then they're also the ones that gave us the results. These numbers. So the okay. charts are reflective of the numbers on the far right for the weight. So they took okay. the you know uh, the 54321 I think was the listing that they had, and they just kind of gave each one individual weight. So are we looking for a low number or a high number? The higher the number would be, the higher the demand that they want Would that have, sort of facility. Like high, low. Oh, we did high and low. Okay, thank so you. I'm just looking at the high ones that are higher. And if you look at like like the pickleball, basically it says, there it says low. Pickleball, pickleball is 21.8 21 high. And if you look at the graph, I don't think the two pertain. Graph is showing it's really high. <laughs> the way I'm reading it, I feel like. Uh, the um, restrooms and like the biking trails are the highest priority. Is yeah, that what you? Is that what it is? Biking trails. Like yes. The restrooms comes up at one point one two. But you want to be closer to one. I feel like. Is that where you want to be? Stace? I guess I can't. I I'm not very familiar with the Survey Monkey results on how they do that. To be honest with you, so you get that from I'd myself? have to talk to Tony, um, our our IT Tony, <laughs> and see what he says about that. If, Look at picnic areas, basically they're at 77 percent. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying now, Todd. I think you're okay. correct that we'll need to dig into the, the graphing, but I think if you're looking here, yeah, your river walk development is high, your restrooms are high, um, playground equipment. Ball, but, you know, right. At 21. This one was how well are the current facilities meeting our needs? So you can kind of take a look at meeting needs and acceptably met and kind of combine those two if we're, uh, if we're doing an acceptable job or not. Um, needs not being met. Native prayer areas, looks like it came in high. Park restrooms again. Uh, paved trails. River walk. So if you take a look at some of those, it'll give you an idea, too, where people are thinking we need to, to do a little more focusing in development. I'm going to scroll through some of these because it's a lot of information we'll get into. As far as, Bill, some of your question, uh, please choose your top three priorities for park maintenance. Um, no surprise here. Um, I think our restrooms, a lot of that, when I think people are looking at maintenance, it has a lot to do with the older facilities, which we're currently trying to do one facility a year. So I think we're going to see that um, number come down the next couple of years because we've, uh, with the council's support, been trying to do at least one restroom facility per year. So uh, playground maintenance, that's one area where um, Chad and I have been pushing for um, the continued replacement of the older equipment as well as the wood fiber mulch that we need to put underneath there we had a lot of comments that you know we need more of that wood fiber mulch um, and that becomes a budgetary issue basically trash pickup removal um, so really nothing here that that surprised me a lot of trail maintenance and again those are the things we're trying to um, continue to get into our budget and work with our streets division to do some of our our trail and, and road maintenance as well so again it just breaks it down in a chart for you. Uh, let us know if there's a service that needs to be expanded and approved. Uh, again, no surprise, bike and, and walking trails. Uh, the river walk continues to be supported. So here you can take a look at some of those numbers. Here's a, a question, should, uh, should the city explore, investigate uh, various Amenities, uh, bike and pedestrian again, rated high. Um, one reason we put the carousel in here, and, and people have been asking what's going on with the carousel at the amusement rides, is uh, we've gotten estimates to repair that of anywhere between one hundred to one hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. It's a very old piece of equipment. Um, obviously, doesn't make a lot of money for us because the rides are fairly cheap down there. But it is something that we wanted to put out to the public to see if there's an interest in continuing some of the amusements down there. Um, so that's something we may be coming back to this board and get some further input. When we did our study back in 2011, the amusement rides at Menominee Park, Park were not rated very high as, as far as importance or expanding. Um, but you can see here when we put the question out there, uh, there's a, a pretty, you know, 30-some percent of the people said that we should uh, 
consider doing something with that carousel. But again, it's going to come down to money and a potential fundraising effort to to get that taken place. Um, some of these questions got into more of the uh, the pedestrian and biking and walking around the city. You can see that um, walking in and around the city about uh, what. 89, 90% of the people felt that it was great or good walking around the city. Biking was a little um, less favorable at about 71% um, or so. So I think that speaks for um, continuing to improve uh, the bike lanes, on-road sharrows, um, things that are, we work with uh, the transit department and the planning division through the bike and pedestrian planning. Um, this asks you know, what, how many times in the past 12 months um, you've accessed park information. Uh, this is, I think, some of these. This gets into some of our park facility rentals. You can see that not many of the people that responded, just over 17% did, um, in fact, <laughs> rent one of our shelters. Uh, got into some of the questions as far as the type of events. And then how we, how would you rate the um, the quality of the Ray, can, can I ask a question? How, what percentage of our shelters are rented every year? Isn't it like 90 plus percent? Just guessing. I don't need a specific, but um, I'll ask Stacy, but probably every weekend, um, probably about 80 to 90 percent, Stacy, of our shelters are rented throughout the park system. The summer months when children are off school, <coughs> shelters, especially that are enclosed, those are like 95 percent probably rented on a Saturday and Sunday. Um, throughout the week, it's off and on. A lot of different organizations use the shelters at that point. Uh, I wouldn't have an idea as to the percentage okay. on that. This time of year, it drops off quite a sure. bit because everyone's back in school. But um, this being my first year doing all of this, I was actually quite surprised in May how many people were using it before school let out. And then even now in September and into October, especially the enclosed shelters get reserved pretty quickly. And then anything with electricity or close to a restroom or the playgrounds. So do we do, do do we keep track of any comments they make about the shelters or anything when they're when they're returning keys or anything or do we keep track of the complaints maybe or something if like that? If they make a complaint, then I go to chat about it and make sure okay. that anything's taken care of right away. Uh, and generally, when people return keys, if they don't just use the Dropbox, it's quite favorable. A lot of people are really happy that they have the facility that it's there for them to use. Uh, there are some people that have made suggestions and recommendations, and again, I usually pass those on to Chad and Ray so that they know what the public's asking for. Great, thank you. Bill, you can see 153 people out of the respondents answered the question. So ease of reservation process, greater good, you're looking at 92% um, said it was easy process, quality and cleanliness, you're looking at about 88% of the people saying that they were. The cost, um, again, I think pretty high. I think people feel they're getting a pretty good value. And then overall experience with the facility, um, again, I think very high. Um, so at least the survey is telling us that, that things are doing pretty well. <coughs> and we got into some of the questions about the leech and some of the activities that they participated in there and, and how many times. Um, you can see Waterfest, special events, Parks Department events. And then this is one, um, I see that the two young ladies are here in the audience actually, um, that will be on the agenda next month. Um, there will be a request from, um, from the young ladies and their group from Rethink and uh, the County Health Department to consider um, an ordinance to create tobacco-free either areas or tobacco-free city parks. Um, so as part of their um, bringing their information forward, we put this question in our survey and you'll see that out of our respondents, 66 to 67 percent of the respondents said that they would support such an ordinance, um, and no, about 33 percent. So um, they will be again making a presentation to us next month and asking us to give our input um, to their project as well. Uh, How common is this in other parks, Ray? Just again, general question. The no smoking. Um, they have a probably. 10 different cities that they've been looking at, I think, and got different ordinances. And I think they'll be able to address that. Um, unless you guys, if you want to talk about it now, it's up to you because it's on the, the survey. It's up, unless you just want to bring it forward next month. Um, so I would say they've shared with us probably 
about 10 different municipalities. Um, the city or the village of Juneau down in Dodge County just enacted one. Um, Green Bay and Appleton have certain areas in their parks that are smoke-free or tobacco-free. Um, Eau Claire, I think, was one. So we'll get into that next month. Um, I think it's becoming a little more common. Um, and between this and a few of the other ordinance that we have, um, I can't speak for the police department, but um, the chief has been involved in this discussion, and he said obviously it's it's not going to be high on their enforcement list, um, and they're going uh, this group will be helping do more education for the public than anything else. So, um, what I did prior to the meeting, I handed out to you a, a list of general comments that that Stacy pulled together from the last question on our survey, which was question twenty seven. And again, there were, <coughs> out of the 651 respondents, there were about 365 um, which, that provided a, a comment here in this section. Um, so I'm not gonna get into much detail on this. Um, you can take a look through this. Um, again, nothing really that, that jumped out and surprised us. Um, improving some of the park maintenance. Again, we were trying to do that. Bike trails, there was a number of comments. Um, Multi-youth, youth sports complex. Little Oshkosh update, uh, the native plantings, um, obviously was an, an item of uh, concern with a number of the respondents. So I thought it was some good information and I don't know if there's anything this board would like to bring up or anything we wanna start making sure that Rettler incorporates them. What they will do as part of um, the corp, they will provide us basic analysis of the survey results and give us a lot of what we just talked about but that section will be included in here um, so I'm open to comments if you have any for me I don't have any except I'd like to see about 2,000 people respond instead of 600 that's a very low <clears throat> Doesn't that seem low to you? Yeah, we had when we had the 800 last time, we felt that was a pretty good um, response rate. Um, I had hoped that we would have seen a little bit more this year. One reason we may not have is we didn't focus as hard on the, the youth organizations uh, because if you recall last year, we worked with the Convention Visitors Bureau and um, Convention Visitors Bureau did a study of all the youth organizations asking needs and did a needs assessment um, so I think in our previous document a lot of those groups generated this survey through their organizations which is a couple thousand yeah. so I think because we didn't really focus there because we have that information it might have dropped the numbers down a little bit too okay thank you no business there isn't any park directors report I'm going to leave it up to staff to report because um, between working with Rettler um, and the, the golf course um, item um, as well as budget right now, just to give you an update on the budget, the council will be receiving the, um, the proposed budget uh, tomorrow evening at the council meeting. Um, we have budget meetings set up with the Common Council on October 30th and 31st. Um, they've been meeting during the day hours, so 8 until 5 o'clock roughly each of those two days. Um, our department will be meeting on that Tuesday in the afternoon. Um, we'll go over our operating budget proposal as well as our five-year capital plan. Um, so those we will be working on. Um, one item on the council agenda tomorrow evening is the special events fees for 2018. Um, if you recall earlier this year, back in January and February, when we brought the um, fee proposal forward, um, there were some questions and concerns about um, some of the increases that some of the events were seeing based on um, a 10 percent administrative charge that we had proposed as well as some of the staff costs that had not been charged in the past uh, specifically um, community service officers from the police department um, some of the police officer times as well as on the fire department side some of the battalion chiefs um, a lot of that time was not being charged and um, probably should have been so the the special event fee organ um, special event organizers will be seeing um, some increases what we did um, since April, April through the end of July, um, we actually had a special events working group, which had 
um, representatives from small, medium, and large special event organizations. Um, I believe we had three just general citizen members um, as part of that. Todd was a part of that working group. Um, and then we had myself, Kathy Snell, and Trina Larson from our finance um, part of that group. Um, we came up with a proposal that um, the working group supported, um, not unanimously on all different aspects. Um, it was a, a much good three months of meeting and uh, almost like union negotiations where the city gave and special event organizers realized they had to give. Um, so the proposal is going to the council tomorrow night for consideration. Um, it outlines most of those items that we had talked about. So that's really been a lot of the stuff that I've been working on and um, I know Jenny will report on everything she's had going on and, and Chad's got some items as well. I just want to highlight you guys a few things of uh, projects and stuff that have been going on over the past month if you haven't been out and about in the park set setting but with the, our playground projects taking place at Sea Sand and Sailor Land at Menominee Park and also at Fugal Park, park are nearing completion. Um, the, all the components are installed and next week they'll start putting the port in place rubber surfacing in for those. So those complete projects came through with uh, you know accessible walks around there and uh, definitely cleaned up some sites and think make them more useful here in the future. Uh, so if you get out to take a chance to take a look at those, please do so. In addition, down at 24th Street Boat Launch, over the past couple of years we've been working on uh, phasing in projects to do in there, how money's been available to the bathroom and right now we're finishing up the uh, an accessible walk out to the T dock along the break wall. Uh, they actually started setting forms today and we'll start getting that and hopefully be done by the end of the week here. So it'll be a little bit easier for people to work or to get out there and use that site uh, from you know all challenges. So for fishing and getting out there. So those are definitely taking place. Uh, our park shop is going through some uh, HVAC renovations right now. Uh, we're also working on one for the zoo maintenance building that will hopefully take place later this fall. Um, and if, in regards to some maintenance items, just uh, still doing a lot of mowing, uh, trying to get facilities shut down here going into the fall uh, and winterized and uh, getting ready for special events that we have in the department uh, coming in October. So uh, pretty brief right now, but uh, hopefully we'll have a nice fall to keep going. So, Chad, one question. Do you have an update on the lift station in Mary Jewel Park? Uh, where that's we just got the plans here the other day uh, going forward. Uh, things should start to be moving forward here in the next month or so with that okay. project. Uh, you mean the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a lift station, bathroom, oh, shelter. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay, boss, you're up. <laughs> um, like Chad said, um, trying to get the, the different facilities shut down, we closed the last full weekend in September, um, which happened to be like the hottest year, I think, of the entire summer, um, which was okay, but we had touch a truck on September 23rd. Um, it honestly was 90 plus degrees, which is why we moved it to September, because um, we had a July last year that it was insanely hot. and. Um, all the volunteers were warm and all the people by their trucks were warm so we're like well let's move it to September it'll be a nice cool day and it was 90 plus degrees in September 23rd so um, but it was great we still had 2,000 plus people it was crazy we kind of thought because of the hot day it would it would wipe it out but everyone came early and it was a great event um, we get a lot of really good positive um, you know comments on that event which is great that one's um, sponsored by Ashkash Corporation, and so we're really glad that they sponsor that event, and um, the kids love it. So um, then we had a new event on our last day this year, the Children's Day Parade at the in the amusement center. So we had the kids could build a float, and they could register to show up that day, and they registered down by the <coughs> beach house and kind of paraded around the lakefront over to the amusement center, and we had little trophies and prizes and juice and snacks and. Um, we had bounce houses and pony rides, and again, it was super, super hot, you know. So, um, but being the first year, and it, it turned out nice, and people did come out even though the weather was really warm. So, um, but a great weekend, a great closing weekend of the of the year. So it uh, it went really well. So working on closing things up, trying to get things cleaned up for the winter, and moving on to our our last event of the year, Zuluween. So um, October twenty first and twenty second. Um, so definitely still looking for volunteers for that event. Um, it's always the biggest one of the year, uh, so hoping for great weather for that. 
even though we have a noon Packer game on Sunday, so that always kind of affects Sunday. Uh, we always hope for a late game or a bye that week, but we didn't get that this year. So, um, But it'll be a great weekend, and we definitely we need a lot of help for that event. So any groups that you know that need to put hours in or anything like that, you know, let me know for sure. So um, other than that, that's kind of what I'm focusing on right now. So. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? <clears throat> Terry, I'd like to have it on maybe the next uh, agenda a discussion about um, what winter activities do we provide our citizens in the parks do we have cross-country ski trails do we have snowshoe trails what do we have for ice skating out in Miller's Bay um, I think that discussion needs to be had what our opportunities are there for um, outdoor recreation you know garbage hill I think people don't call it that anymore, but, you know, it's tobogganing, <laughs> tobogganing and tubing and that. I mean, I just, I, you know, I was up north this last week, and the city of Rylander is adding two more outdoor ice rinks in partnership with a grocery store, Triggs, one of theirs. they got some empty spots. They're going to flood, flood an area. And the and the choir. I've been talking about an ice well, skating rink for 15 years. I know, years and there's talk here. of it having it at the Leach or down in Market Square, game. but I think we need to have that discussion because it kind of parallels to where the discussion with the golf course is all about for more green space and more you know, possible opportunities. And I just think we don't have much opportunity in the winter for people to do outdoor recreation around here. Visit for the fisheries, the two fisheries that provide some outdoor entertainment. What do we really have for our citizens in the winter? I agree. I think it's a good idea. Did, didn't we used to have an ice skating rink over off an app street over there? And, and the warming house is still there, so... Or, yeah, yeah. Corey Park had it. Yeah. We had one at the Rainbow Park, too, at the old... Uh, well, it actually turned into a hockey rink. Yeah. That, well, we had... That disappeared. We had them at Miller's Bay. We had them in the lagoon. We had them at every school. We had them mm -hmm. all over, and now we have absolutely none. We do have them on Miller's Bay and um, north of the fishing pier on Lake Winnebago as well. North of the fishing pier on Lake Winnebago. They plow off the, the one part of it. but In the bay. bay? In the bay sometimes. Not, not out on Lake Winnebago? No, 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 no. It's right. in Miller's okay. Bay. It's in Miller's Bay. Yeah. Right. Okay, all right. Yeah. But no, we can, I, I agree. I think we should have. And if we do, you know, because it, it, there's a, talking about the marketing piece, you know, if there is that opportunity, our citizens probably don't even, aren't even aware that there is some potential for cross country skiing, you know, in the county park for sure. Uh, Snowshoe shoeing in the county park is available by the Coghlan Center. And uh, I just think that we need to do a better job of promoting if we have any outdoor winter activities. I do. I do see people using uh, Lakeshore in the winter time for cross country skiing, and I've seen anybody snowshoeing though. But it's wide open to them. Menominee Park. I see people skiing a lot down Menominee Park. Oh, do we have a designated trail? Do we groom a trail? Do we? I'm not a cross country skier, but I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll wear my parks hat for just this moment <laughs> because. It, when I work the weekends, I have to groom our cross-country ski trail in the county park. And we have two types of groomers. We have one that does track skiing, you know, where you go back and forth. And the other one is more of like the comb skiing, so that it's kind of for the people that race or do a different type of cross-country ski. Skate ski. That's it. And then there's, you know, they have a, a snowshoeing trail at the Coghlan Nature Center, which is by the Coghlan Building. But Again, very little used, but we maintain them in the winter months for citizens to use. Does anybody in here cross country ski? I do. How do I you go to Nordic Mountains usually? But do you have? Are you prefer? Are I you, go forward or backwards. I think that's. But I mean, I, uh, is it groomed or? I you would definitely prefer it to be groomed. Yes. You do. Okay. All right. Yeah, they, the county has two types of groomers. One's a like a sled, and it has two tracks on it. And that's the track, the track one. And then last year they bought a one for the other type of grooming. They have two separate five-mile trails in the county park. Okay, we got that on, huh? Yep. All right. Anything else? I don't know if this would fall under the, the parks board in the end, if. And if anything does happen with the Lakeshore Golf Course, 
what is going to happen to all the memorial trees that were donated to the to the golf course along with the plaques with the citizens names and then I know there's some benches that has um, people's names that were donated um, I hope we have a plan to somehow either replan them or something to recognize those that were donated to our park system we'd do the same thing if it got to that point like we did down at south park um, with the lagoon project if there were some uh, memorial trees we um, did our best to transplant those within the park somewhere and kept the plaques and so forth so once we get to that point if we get to that point um, we'd come up with a plan similar to south park okay good and one last thing and it, again we don't know but it ha hasn't been a discussion item at least on the council end yet of do we want to continue to be as a city or as a parks department uh, in the golf course business? You know, if 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 Oscar's Corp would purchase some of that golf course, would there be enough left to build a, another kind of golf course or entertain the idea of another kind of golf course? Does the city want to be in that business? It would make it a lot easier, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Correct, and, and I'm just planting some seeds for the future because you know there, there's there's two draft plans, but none of them talk about future golfing in the city of Oshkosh. No, but they I, said they never. I you know, I want everybody and, and the public to know those are very conceptual plans at this point. Correct. They are. That I think what we're trying to get a feel for um, through community development and community development is. If this were to happen and 30 to 40 acres of that property were taken, uh, not taken, uh, purchased, would the the public and the council prefer to see more retail and other development on a site or prefer to see green space, 60 acres more of a public green space? So I want people to understand and I need the Parks Board to understand that even though you're seeing those conceptual plans, that park, if it were to be redeveloped, would come before this Parks Board and our department. Um, we would be the one generating what the public want to have. We'd have a lot of public input meetings. So I want everybody to be aware that these are very conceptual. Right. Um, so um, I've, I've let people know that. And what's shown on that plan is not ultimately what is going to be there as far as recreational amenities. Steve, uh, going back to what you're saying, does the city want to be in the golf course business? I think we're looking at it the wrong way. To, to me, that's a recreation business. That's where I get my recreation. I use Lakeshore Golf Course for recreation. I use Miller's Bay boat, the boat launches there, Fugelberg and Rainbow. You know, for recreation, that's what I use. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not a it's not a, a, a to me a golf course business. It's a it's a, a way of providing recreation to the residents of the city. As far as I'm concerned, we're in every other business, so yes. But as far as if you weren't at the meeting no, I was Wednesday, out of I mean, as far as all the people that were there and all of us, and I, I said, if they do anything, if it goes through, like I said, I don't want to see low-rent housing. I don't want to see grocery stores. I don't want to see... And I think that was pretty much everybody else's thing. If it's going to be anything, it's going to be green space and not necessarily where you just look at it. We could have something there. Right. But it isn't going to be low-rent housing. It ain't going to be condos. It ain't going to be grocery stores. Sure, there's going to be hotels and that there, but Wally's got all that land to sell them. If he ain't already sold it to somebody. Right. And, I mean, that's where it's going to go on the outside of it, as far as I'm concerned. And right, I agree. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, nope. I interrupt you. No, I'm waiting. Anybody else? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. It's always on this game.